All right, we are live in both places. Um, just keep an eye on the room here. We've got a couple of people joining us over on Facebook. Can you guys let me know? Audio visual stuff is okay. You can hear us all right. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to go through uh, some quick housekeeping stuff. Uh, and we will get started. So um, we are live in two places. Um, we are on Zoom and Facebook Live. So if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, please feel free to drop your questions in the comments. Uh, if you are on um, Zoom on the webinar side, go ahead and use the Q&A section to ask your questions over there. Um, we will kind of roll through kind of an agenda in chunks and answer questions periodically. And then, um, once again at the end so just leave your questions and if i'm not getting to you immediately i will get to you okay um so all that said i'm kirsten green i'm the executive director of retired racehorse project and i'm here this evening with dr shannon reed um she is with texas amu university and she is a thoroughbred makeover veteran and has been instrumental in helping us um bring our horse welfare policies uh, up to what I think could be considered um, really leading edge for a lot of horse shows. Um, a lot of what we do is really only done at the FEI level. Um, and so with all the emphasis that we want to put on horse welfare, uh, good conditioning, good horse management, and dispelling what people think about thoroughbreds, um, we really had to institute um, some measures to make sure that we were showcasing these horses in their best light and so that's kind of where the arrival exam came into play um and shannon i'll just give you a moment to introduce yourself and who you are and where you're from and why you thought we had to have an arrival exam hi uh so like uh, kirsten said i'm shannon reed i am a veterinarian here in texas um i was born and raised in las vegas nevada and was a crazy horse girl from the moment i arrived on the planet um so i got to do the makeover well i think in 2017 and 2018 and while i was there i wanted to find a way to keep involved and there were people that were sort of struggling with the concepts and the myths that you can't get weight onto thoroughbreds and that they can't be barefoot and sound and just all sorts of things that we noticed that those myths were being so pervasive that people were believing them. And so there was this just line we had to say where we wanted to say, hey, we can get these horses into great body condition score and we can get them sound and arriving there. So it was just an opportunity to bust some myths in our in our own heads and in the public heads. And that's kind of how it started. Yep. So Shannon's, uh, I, I always looked to her as being a poster child for like, when you give good and constructive feedback, that's really the way to affect change because Shannon always had like the best debrief emails that she would send me like from her truck, like on the way home from the makeover each year. And so they were always just really well constructed and really helpful and we've made a lot of good changes uh, because of that. So, and now Shannon's stuck with us because we call her our consulting veterinarian. So get what you ask for, Shannon. <laughs> I'm honored to do it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just take a couple of minutes and talk through a, a little bit about the check-in process and kind of like the pieces of this and a few things that you're going to want to be aware of kind of administratively to make sure that you have a good check-in process. So um, when you arrive at the horse park, uh, there's going to be a check-in area set up in the show offices outside the hunter jumper complex. That's kind of like right in the middle of the horse park, in the middle of everything, convenient to stabling all of that. Um, so once you and your horse have arrived, this is a key thing this year is please do not check in until your horse is on site. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so once you, when you come to check in and your horse is there, like settling in in their stall, um, come to check in with all of your health paperwork. So you're going to need your Coggins, your health certificate, and, um, and we will check all of that upon check-in. So once you get that, and the reason why you have to wait until your horse is there is because the way we're going to handle this this year is that you're going to go into a queue. 
Um, and so there's going to be a team of veterinarians roving the barns, looking for horses that are checked in and ready to start the first portion of their exam. Um, we're not doing schedules like by barn block, by stalls or anything like that this year. Um, that didn't go as um, efficiently as we hoped it would last year. And we think that we can get it done a little bit faster if we just do it uh, with putting everybody in the queue. So once you're in the queue, the vet team is estimating that they can get to you within 30 minutes. That's the goal. Um, again, we're making some adjustments this year, so please be patient with us. Um, you are allowed to school and you are allowed to go about the horse park and do whatever you wanna do um, before you complete your arrival exam. But please understand that once you're in that queue, it is your obligation to make sure that you are at your stall when a vet comes by to start your exam. And it is your obligation to make sure that that exam gets completed before um, the end of the day on Tuesday and prior to the start of competition. So you cannot compete without having passed the arrival exam. Um, so that said, we didn't wanna like lock you guys down and say that you couldn't school prior um, to completing your arrival exam, especially if things go sideways for whatever reason and we get behind, um, we want to make sure that you guys don't miss any schooling opportunities. So we will have a public queue available and you'll be able to see like where you are in that queue and try to manage your day accordingly. Um, if you will be shipping in um, either like stabling off site and have a day stall or shipping in later than Tuesday, you need to let us know. Um, we do know if you're shipping in already, but if you're gonna be checking in late as well, um, we need to know that so that we can make alternate arrangements to get your arrival exam done. Um, ship in horses, when you arrive, go ahead and pull into the barn block of like barns one through four, and you can go ahead, walk over and do check-in and they'll do your arrival exam there off the trailer in barns one through four. Um, so that's the first part. So again, like if you take away anything from this, like please don't check in until your horse is there and please make sure to wait stall side and keep an eye on the queue and make sure that you are there and ready when the vets come to do part one of your exam. So we kind of break the exam down into two parts. We do um, a first like visual inspection. Um, so we're gonna do vitals, temperature, pulse, and respiration. We're going to do microchip scan and um, a visual inspection for um, blemishes and swellings. So just make sure that there's nothing on the horse that's painful um, or like open gaping wounds or anything like that. So we can comp complete all of that stall side. And then once you finish that part, you go over to barns one through four, what will they do, where they will do uh, walking in hands down this exam. Um, a note about microchips, you do have to have your horse microchipped uh, if you have not dealt with that. Um, now is the time to take care of that. Um, we have them for sale in our online store, but and they do need to be registered to the jockey club. So you need to first check and see if your horse has one. If not, you need to order one, get it inserted and registered with the jockey club. So there's a couple of steps that you need to take and you should do them in that order because if your horse is 2017 or later, he probably already has one. If he doesn't have one, you need to get one and it's pointless to have a microchip if you have it inserted and don't have it recorded anywhere. So you need to pass those three steps because that's how we're verifying identity at the makeover. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning when I was talking about health paperwork, we talked about Coggins, we talked about 30 day health certificates. You also need to have your EHV1 vaccine and you need to have appropriate documentation of that. Your EHV1 vaccine cannot be administered less than 14 days prior to your arrival at the horse park and cannot be administered less more than six months prior to your arrival. So now is also the time to deal with that. We've um, we have had people turned around because they didn't have their EHV1 vaccine in the right timeline and or because they did not have correct documentation. Um, you can find all the details on this in our rule book, um, but basically what we consider appropriate vaccine documentation um, is a bill or receipt with the horse's name um, and date of administration from your vet clinic 
or a letter on um, letterhead from your vet clinic certifying that, or it can be added to your horse's health certificate. So please, again, these are little simple things that would just be easy to take care of and a real shame to become a problem for you um, at the makeover once you get there. Like, don't let that be the thing that ruins your weekend. Um, so that's the kind of breakdown of how this works. And I'm going to pop it over to Shannon because she's going to talk a little bit about what the vets are looking for, um, what the process, you know, particularly around body condition score, um, that also happens stall side. And that is the one that everybody gets very concerned about. There's a lot of misconceptions about the difference between water weight and body condition. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over that um, and kind of debunk a couple of things, try to quell any questions or concerns that you have, um, and kind of walk you through also like what happens if your horse is not looking like they're going to pass, because I think that's worth talking about as well. So I'm going to flip it over to Shannon and keep an eye on the questions. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, so um, we sort of mentioned the, the bones of what's going to happen. The people that are going to be doing the exams will be a team of people. That team will consist of veterinarians, veterinary technicians or veterinary students, they're gonna be all together. So some of the exam might be started by an experienced veterinary student who's been trained and they're being overseen by a veterinarian who's also gonna be a part of that process. So you may have more than one person coming to your stall and that's a good thing. I wanna ask you to be nice to these vet students because they are so excited to meet you guys. And whenever we do this event, the vet students go crazy at how nice the trainers are, how much they learn. It gets veterinarians wanting to do thoroughbred stuff. So that's just a little bonus to let you guys know there's going to be more than one person there. They're all trained in what we're doing and it's going to be overseen by a senior veterinarian on each team. Okay. So, um, big things we're looking for, they're going to check that paperwork. It's going to be digitized and right in front of them. And they're going to be checking the health certificates, the Coggins and the vaccines and talking to you about those and where they're at. That's kind of easy, straightforward. You get it loaded. There it goes. Um, the microchips, we have the scanners, we'll check for them. Every, one, every year we find two in a couple of horses. One year we found three and another year we found four. <laughs> so just be aware there's uh, maybe an extra microchip in there. So don't freak out if the first time we say the microchip doesn't match, we start looking for a second microchip. So that's something that has happened. We've worked it out. We've looked for a second microchip and dug more into that. Um, so vaccine straightforward, like Kirsten said, these are the requirements. There's no wiggle room. It is what it is. Um, the microchip, sometimes a few come up, we figure it out. We're going to do that TPR. We're going to be doing this in your horse's stall so that they can feel a little bit calmer and safer about it. We found that that works best. Um, they're going to take a temperature pulse and respiration they're gonna run their hands on the horse and physically touch them. Um, if we see a big swollen knee or something like that, we're gonna to wanna to touch it and flex it just to get in our, eye, our eyes on it. And we're gonna take a few notes on it. So if your horse has a physical blemish and it doesn't relate to a painful lameness, that's okay. We understand their race horses. They may even have some muscle atrophy, but as long as they are sound and we don't believe there to be a painful lameness, we're gonna work through that process. So if your horse has a big old bow tendon, but it's cold and old, the experienced veterinarians will know that. If your horse has a tendon and it's painful to the touch, we might have to have a different conversation. So there's going to be some hands-on about the blemishes, but it's big stuff and things that we think are going to relate to discomfort of the horse, not just because they have a scar or something going on with the muscle. We have enough experience for that to, to tell the difference. The body condition score it's based on what's called the Henneke system. And maybe Kirsten can put the spelling up in there. If you Google Henneke body condition score system, it'll come up with a few different charts. At the makeover, we're gonna use the most complete chart. And the veterinarians may look at your horse and be like, this is clearly a six, hunters, I'm looking at you. And that's a good thing. If a horse is clearly a six, they're probably just gonna log it as a acceptable score and move on. If a horse is kind of like, oh, I think this is a little on the side where we want to look at it closely, they're going to go all the way through the whole Henneke system and they're going to score the individual body parts and then they're going to average the score and the total body condition score needs to come out at four or above. 
Okay. And that is based on hands-on the musculature covering the ribs, the musculature of the back and the loin and things like that. So for some horses, it might just be a quick glance because they clearly meet the parameters for some horses. It might be a little bit more of a hands-on, but it's not just one factor that determines it. So if you're afraid because your horse is ribby and you're not sure how it's going to condition body condition score, pull that whole chart for yourself do it for yourself, have your vet do it and realize that the ribs are just a small part of it um, where they need to be. So it's not just ribby horses that don't get accepted. The other thing is we're measuring muscle and bone, and those are not things that are going to be affected by a trailer ride. Now, horses can look a little drawn up after a trailer ride. If they're dehydrated or they need fluid, something like that, they're going to tuck up in their abdomen and maybe in their face, but they're not going to lose significant body condition for that. So just trailering is not going to drop a horse into an entirely different body condition score. It may make them look a little drawn up and we got to take care of that on a different level, but coming in, they should be fine because your, if your horse is a four, they're going to stay a four. Now, having said that, if you're barely eking into a body condition score of four and you ship in early and your horse stops eating and they start circling the whole time and everything, they may stress themselves into a different situation. So we want to say, give yourself a little wiggle room and talk with your vet about the things you can do to preserve that. But it's not going to drop a body condition score just by trailering, just by losing weight, just by being stressed they have to actually have a condition that's eroding away muscle. And that's, that's not going to happen unless they're sick. Um, so that's about the body condition score. And then moving on a little bit to the lameness exam, and then we'll circle back to what happens if for some reason you get flagged. So the soundness exam, you guys all need to know, it's going to be on a firm, hard surface. And your horse is going to do it at a walk. And they're going to ask to be a circle and a turn. So if your horse is barefoot and they're comfortable in the arena or on grass barefoot, but they're very ouchy on pavement or gravel, you probably need to bring hoof boots for them anyways to move about the park. And you're allowed to have them on the horse for the, um, for the soundness exam. So what you need to do for your horse to be comfortable on a hard surface is what they can be wearing for the soundness exam. Um, it's relatively straightforward. We're trying to make sure that we're not seeing things that are really jumping out at us, but there is asking for a circle. It's not crazy tight. It's something that we would use as part of our, as our uh, veterinary exam in general. Um, that's the soundness part of it. If we get backed up on the soundness exam, we'll pull over some other horses or other horses. We'll pull over more horses. We'll pull over more vets and we'll get it taken care of. I think last year at one time we had 20 horses waiting and they were all through there in 15 minutes. So don't panic if you get over there and there's a long line, you might hand graze, you might do a little bit of, um, groundwork, something like that, but we'll get it to happen. So here's what's going to happen if you get flagged on your exam. Um, the first veterinarian has a form that they're filling out where they check the boxes. Microchip is good. Vaccines are good. And they're going through it. If everything passes, you'll sign that you were there and it'll get sent into the system. You'll go onto the lameness exam. It'll get signed there. And then you'll get a sticker, I believe, that goes on your halter tag that says you're done. If it, the horse gets flagged, you don't get the sticker and you enter into another queue to have a second exam by another veterinarian. Don't tell that vet why you're having a second exam. They're going to come up and do an entirely new everything. So if the problem was body condition score, you'll know it. The vet talking to you will tell you and the next vet won't know it. So they're gonna do all the steps. So please don't say to them, don't take the temperature, they already had it. This is what we call a blinded exam. That vet has nothing, they don't know what the first one did. If they both come out with a low body condition score that's unacceptable, the trainer can wait 24 hours to represent to a third veterinarian. And then a third veterinarian with the stewards will look at the horse and grade it again. And so you, to be washed out um, or have to not participate, you have to have been told by three veterinarians on three separate occasions that your horse is not meeting the standards for that day. Sometimes horses come and they're, they're not sound um, and we wait 24 hours and they're like, okay, I shipped, I'm feeling better and we're okay. Some horses decide that they're not going to show because of that. So the process we feel is pretty fair 
It's not going to be that one veterinarian can kick you out because they don't like the color of your hair or your horse kicked at them or anything like that. It's a very specific process that we've built in and it'll involve the stewards. Um, I think that covers most of what I had on my checklist to kind of remind you guys about that will happen in the exam. Um, can you think of anything, Kirsten, on the troubleshooting? I don't think so. I just was jotting down a couple of notes here. I've dropped a few things in the comments or chat. Um, just additional resources. If you go into the trainer portal section of the website, like in the my account section, um, we do have plenty of additional links um, in the trainer resources section. Um, the USCF drug policy, biosecurity measures, um, smart pack, a couple of different samples and information about body condition scoring, uh, current link to the Kentucky State Vet. Um, anything um, it has never changed, but anything uh, that we have to do as far as like changes in the health the documentation protocol is always going to go according to state vet. Um, so, but that's it continued to be the same thing. Um, it's linked there to the arrival exam procedure. Obviously, the rule book is an incredible resource because it documents all of this in detail for you as well. Um, so, feel free to check that out. Um, also, posted in the comments and in the group and everything like that. Um, the uh, We did a whole video last year. Um, there's a couple of things logistically that have changed about that, but overall, like the procedure and everything is largely the same. It's still a very good and valid resource. Um, so make sure to check that out. Um, and basically at this time, you know, it's, um, we always get a lot of stress about the arrival exam this time of year. And I don't, I think a certain amount of stress about it is warranted. We, you know, we want you guys to take it seriously um, and work with your bets if you're concerned. Um, you know, we are more than happy if you need to email us and you're like, oh, I'm really like not sure about where my horse stands. Um, we're happy to help out to the extent that we can. It's also really difficult to have like, to be able to help very much uh, just based off of pictures alone. Somebody really needs to be with you and your horse, putting hands on your horse um, to give you like the most accurate assessment. Um, so now is a good time. Happy to help with whatever we can. Happy to connect you with Dr. Reed as needed. Um, but now is a good time to check in with your local vet that you work with on a routine basis. Um, so make sure that you're reaching out to them. Um, but that's pretty much about all we had to cover. I mean, yeah, I thought of one little other point just to bring up to the group is we're also we're doing this for body condition, core and soundness, and we're also doing it for the biosecurity or health of all the horses there. So there is a couple of reasons why you might have an independent situation. Let's say your horse has a fever then we're going to deal with that. And we may have to do some quarantine measures and things like that. But we want you guys to all feel assured that the horses that have arrived are not running a temperature. If they have a snotty nose, we're going to have to have a conversation and we have protocols in place for that. But be aware that we're also trying to keep everybody safe. So think about that um, and just make sure that you're following your own biosecurity there. Don't share hoses into buckets and then move them from horse to horse. Think about that's the same as them touching nose to nose. Don't let them meet their sibling from the track and smoosh all over each other, <laughs> okay? Because that's how we smoosh herpes virus from back to forth. So think about it as good biosecurity as part of the arrival exam. So if you go to the arrival exam and there's uh, to the lameness part and there's a line, don't go over and start sniffing, letting your horse sniff the poop of the one in front of them. <laughs> We're going to stick with that. And I just want to reiterate what Kirsten said, like, this is fun for the vets. We enjoy talking with you guys. People want to take pictures afterwards that they passed. Some people like to make a big deal of it. Some people cry because it took them that long to get their body condition score. And, and we'll cry along with you or laugh, but we have a lot of fun. I think we take it seriously. And there's a few horses that have had to make adjustments and maybe not been able to show, but for the most people, it's a, it's an achievement to get the arrival exam and to do well on it. And we have a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. It's, it really has there's been a noticeable increase in just the quality of horse management since we instituted this and um you know definitely very proud to kind of roll around the horse park and look at a lot of very thick glossy thoroughbreds you guys really do do a good job um and i'm always very proud 
Um, I do have a couple of questions rolling in on Facebook that I'll cover. Um, just reiterating the EHV1 protocol timeline for Jordan. So your EHV1 vaccine needs to be no more than six months old and no less than 14 days old when you, on the day that you arrive at the horse park. So if you haven't had one recently, get one now. And that way, you know, you're going to have it on time. Don't leave it until September to get it dealt with because we have absolutely had people calling us, you know, in the last week of September in complete and total panic and it rules, rules are rules here. So um, Jennifer wants to know what to do if her mare is on Regumate um, or I I'm not sure that that has to be reported. We follow the USCF drug protocol. Um, if your horse is on something that is on that list that is like allowed under certain restrictions, you can um, use the USCF drug form to declare that when you check in. Yeah, so we're gonna want that. If your horse is on medication, we're gonna want a form that it's on it, even if it's approved, just so that if it throws off the drug testing later, we know it's there. So you need to first check, like Kirsten said, the USEA regulations about that. And when it can be administered, you need to have it prescribed by a veterinarian. We'll follow up on that later. And then there needs to be a drug form filled out for, for medications other than um, gastroguard. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I think we don't need a, a form for, but if you're on Equiox or Regimate, something like that, even though they can show with certain levels of those, it, it's going to benefit you to turn in the form. So any medications you're thinking about, look at the USCF website. The other thing is be careful with supplements and be careful with, um, what do you call it? The body astringents, the um, cooling sprays, the it, poultices, things like that. There are things that are against the rules for showing that you might not think about like lavender. Nope, can't use it. So do go ahead and read the, the lists for that. So, you know, but the regulate should be fine. You just need to read the regulations and make sure your timing is correct and turn in the medication form for it. Yeah. I'm just doing a cursory search of the drug book and it is actually, this is very, very old. Oh, 2022. Okay. Um, not immediately finding anything in the drug book, but Jennifer, definitely reach out to us uh, and we can help you out with that a little bit further. But when in doubt, file a drug form. The other thing is to your vet, there's a number, the vet can call and the, the association will tell them within five seconds what to do. So if you have a vet that's prescribed Regimate, have them call the USCF and they'll give them the, the correct times. Um, any other questions on Facebook or on Zoom? I'm going to set a speed record this evening. Thanks. Glossy <laughs> thoroughbreds. You guys really do do a good job. Um, and I'm always very proud. Um, um, mute like yourself, I'm Shannon, or mute the oh, video. Shoot, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to have like a horrible, like, <laughs> looping. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think we're going to wind it down. Um, I think that is indicative of this is not meant to be an overly complex thing. There's a couple of administrative checkboxes that you need to take care of, and you've got plenty of time to take care of that. Um, and even if you're a little bit concerned, if your horse is on the bubble, you've still got a lot of time to take care of that too. A lot can get be done between now in October, um, I've seen it happen. So um, please definitely reach out to us, be in touch with your vet. Um, now is the time to kind of check this stuff off the list and make sure you're in good shape. Um, and if there's anything we can help you with, just give us a shout. That was easy. We're professionals now. Yep, easy peasy. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much. You have a great evening and we will be uh, not to worry. There's plenty of other details coming out. We will be in touch with you. We'll make sure that you have what you need when you need it. Ride time, stall assignments. It's all going to start hitting pretty soon, um, but we will be in touch. And if there's anything we can help you with, you know where to find us. Have a great evening. <laughs>